Welcome to another edition of Emerging Tech Talk. I'm your host, Dan York, and I want to continue my discussion around the Git Distributed Version Control System. Now, if you aren't familiar with version control systems like CVS and SVN, you may want to go back and look at the previous episode where I talked about version control systems in general. So, when I left the last episode, I mentioned that we had a central repository and we had local working copies on both the, myself and another developer who I called Fred. Now, these, this is with a CVS or SVN type of space. I have working copies. And the issue is, what happens if the network link is severed? Or what happens if the central repository goes away? And basically, you're pretty much dead in the water with CVS or SVN as far as being able to work on things and check in your changes and be able to work with it in some way. So what Git and other distributed version control systems do is they change the model a bit. Now, I should say, I'm talking about Git. But there's a range of other systems that are like this. There's ones Mercurial, Bazaar, uh, Darks, uh, SVK. They, they all function on generally the same kind of concept that I'll talk about here. But I'm going to be specific about Git. Now, in Git land, there are, are no central repositories. There's no server that is responsible that houses all of it. Everything, every repository is its own master. It's a peer-to-peer -peer environment in many ways. Everything is here. Now, before you freak out and think this is insane, realize that it can be set up to work in exactly the same way that you work with CVS or SVN. You can have a central repository that is there, but the difference is that's a convention. Everybody decides that they're going to make this the central place they pull from, okay? But they still have a complete local repository here. The only reason this one is important is because we've decided it is. All right, so you can still have the central model. So let's back up a little bit. With Git, what happens is you create a local repository on your system, okay? And then you commit changes to that repository. You do all your work in that directory. You make changes. You do all of it. But your commits are happening locally, okay? So everything happens here on your system. Now, you can then check, push it, to another repository, such as what might be up here on the central server, and my coworker Fred can pull the changes from here. Right? So there is a concept like this, or you know, I can not create it on my local system, but I can do what's called a clone, and I can copy a copy down from another server. I can clone it onto my local machine. I can make my changes, and then I can push those changes back up to the central place. Fred can push his changes back up there as well. I can pull from there. It can work very much like a traditional system. But here are the advantages. I go to jump on a plane. My, my connection is gone. Okay, This is gone. So what happens is I'm working. I have all of my code, and I have all of my history with me right here. So as I go and make my changes in my local repo, I can, be, uh, I can compare them to old versions. If I delete a change, if I don't like how something is going, I can revert back to what was before. If I accidentally remove a directory, I can go and pull it back out of the repository. In fact, I can do branches here in my local repo, do all of those branches, merges, do everything else I want to do when I'm offline and disconnected. Okay, when I come back on the other side, I can then do go and do a push to push everything back up into that central repo if I want to, or pull it down. The other element is, so what happens if this server gets fried, hardware dies, okay? Remember, it was just yet another Git repo. So what can happen is, if I want to give Fred my changes, I can give him the direct URL if I'm running a Git daemon or something on my box to have him pull my changes directly off of my box, or I can pull his or push to him, or I could even do something like I can, out of my repo, I can generate an email patch and email that over to him, which he can apply against his repo. We can do all of this with full version control, with tracking, everything else, without having that central repository. When it comes back on, you know, when the box comes back up, we can both push our changes back up there. And all the history is retained, all of that's going on. Even if this box is going to be off for a long time, we can decide that maybe we're going to have Fred be our central repository. And we'll push all the changes to him, and other people can push to him as well. So you have all of that kind of protection around what it what it can be. So let's switch to the computer and take a look at how this can actually work. ...that I've got here, and there are all sorts of GUIs and Eclipse plugins and everything else that works with Git, but I'm going to show it from the command line to show you how this can work. So here I'm going to go into the sample XML files where I have a very simple little hello world file, nothing very exciting. 
I'm going to go and create a Git repository here. And all I do is I say Git init. OK, now it's created this. If I look at this, and I'm going to just do this, I've now got a .git directory, which, has, which is actually the repository. And so actually everything lives in that .git directory. The whole repo, the whole history, all of this done. So I could actually copy that to somebody else if I wanted to. So now I'm going to go and I'm going to say git add. And I'm going to add all the files that are there. And then I'm going to do a git uh, commit. Now it's going to pop up and it says changes to be committed. New file, hello world. And I'm going to put in a commit message. So uh, initial commit. And the first line of what you put in here is... Um, is very important because that shows up in all the log messages. But I can put in whatever notes I want to do in here and it used my default editor of VI or Vim because that's what I use. But you could use whatever editor was there. You can also put the uh, commit message right in the command line. So now I've created that. So if I do uh, git status, it's nothing to commit, it's all changed. So I'm going to go and I'm going to modify that file. So hello world. Okay, and I'm going to say um, hello world. Um, this is a test. Very exciting stuff, I can tell you. Okay, so now when I do another get status, I'll see that I've modified this file. So I can go and and now notice it's, it says it's uh, got some changes there, and I'm going to go and do a git commit. I'm going to put a dash a on the end of it, which just says add all the changes to files that have been modified. And um, you know I'm going to say here I'm oops, <laughs> it would help if I use the right things here. I'm going to say modified the uh, hello world file. Okay, and that's going to go. And so now it was committed, and I can see um, see that again. So now this is all I've done. I've gone and I've added a file, or I've to the repository. I've gone and changed this. I can create another file. I'm going to go and say I'm going to create a README file. Hi there. Okay. And now, if I look at this directory, it's that's there, but the README file is not actually in the repository yet. So I'm going to go and again do git add uh, README, and then I'll do a git a git commit. And there are shortcuts to do all of this, but I'm just showing you the long way. Added README. Okay, ta-da! Now this is only so exciting because I'm doing it here on my local local system. I'm not really pushing this to anywhere. I'm not doing anything else like this. Now I'm going to go and I'm going to check out I'm going to, another directory out there on a uh, system out on the internet. And I'm going to use this command here. It says git clone and a URL. Now this points to a git repository hosted out on a service that's out there. So now what it's going and doing is it's connecting to that remote repository, copying it down, and I'm receiving all of the pieces of that repository that's here. And now that it's done, when I look at this, I'll go into that Vox attendant and I'll see I have all of this. So now I can be working in this file, I can be working in this directory, I can add files, I can delete files, I can go in and make all these changes and I'm committing all of this locally and then if I had permission when I was done I could do a git push and that would push all of those changes back up to that repository up on the hosted service. Now, you can modify who has the ability to go and do that. But, you know, again, those are just nuances of how you set this whole thing up. But that's the idea. You have a remote, you have a local repository, which can put be a clone of a hosted repository somewhere. You can make your changes locally. You can push your changes up there. Commits are, are conflicts are resolved very much like you would in a traditional version control system as far as, um, you know, when you go to do your commit or your push, you'll get warnings about conflicts and have the option then to go and do it and change those. You can also put in what are called uh, like post-commit hooks so that when you go and commit locally, it can automatically push your changes to a central um, repository if you want to work in that model. So there's a lot of ways you can work with it. But that's Git. Distributed, the ability to work offline, to, uh, it has a whole host of other capabilities that uh, I'm not even going to talk about here. And you can learn more by going to the URL on the screen that will take you to uh, git-scm.org where you can go and download the copy, try it out, work with it. There's some tutorials up there as well. And now in the next episode, I'm going to talk a little bit about GitHub and how that factors into things as well. Until then, Stan York signing out.